Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at percentage calculations. So this is still a question that I regularly asked um, both through the YouTube and our social media channels and also in person when dealing with Excel spreadsheets and just percentage calculations. So I thought it'd be really good just to bring together four different examples of uh, calculations that we need to use for all reasons we need to find out the percentage of numbers, numbers to put it bluntly. So I pulled those together and was going to go through them in this video here today. Just to remind you that if you want to download this exact workbook that I'm working with now or any of the previous workbooks we've used, if you just go to this link here at the essentialxluk.com forward slash blogs forward slash tutorials, you'll see the full list of tutorials that we've been through and then from each of the tutorials you'll find a bit more description than you find on YouTube and also you'll have the link available to download the exact workbook we're using. Particularly useful if you're following along at home or you just want to have uh, the, the template to actually try for yourself or even just to see what I've done in that template. Okay, so without further delay, let's just jump straight in. So the first one we've got is percentage of total. So this is where we've got a number, so you can see we've got the total of 100, and we want to know what 65% is of 100. So do excuse if some of these are very simple, because for our sake, well, we're doing it in Excel, so chances are we are needing to do a calculation to work out the value. But the reason I ask some apologies is because 65% of 100, probably most of you will find that quite easy calculation. But it just helps with proving that the calculation is working uh, quickly as we go through this. So the easiest way to work this formula is we simply need to go equal sign. So all these are going to use a formula, basically in short. Equals, we'll take our starting number and we're then going to times that by, so using the... Uh, asterisk sign there, so shift and the number eight, or if you've got the extended keyboard, you'll have that symbol on the right side there. And we're gonna times it by our percentage that we have here. Hit enter, and you can see the value arrived is 65. All we then need to do is to copy this down, and you can see we've got result for all of those other options as well. Uh, some of them are decimal numbers, so if you wanted to, you could obviously remove decimal places, but for the purposes, we'll keep those places there. It's worth pointing out this time for any of those not aware in Excel. Even though we've got 65% shown here, this is due to the formatting. What Excel actually recognises is the number behind the percentage, which is if we go into general, we can see that percentages are all actually referenced as those decimal places. So again, not to give uh, simplistic maths guidance, but as we know, a percentage is a representative of a number between zero uh, and uh, one. So obviously one being 100% and then all these decimal places representing that percentage place. So all our calculation is doing is simply timesing 100 by 0 0.65, which gives us the answer of 65. And it's obviously that 0 0.65 that refers to 65%. So we'll just put that percent, uh, the formatting back to show percentage, uh, but just for any that weren't aware, that is how it works. And alternatively, if you have found yourself in this position where you've got these decimal places and you wanted to convert them to show as a percentage, all you need to do is highlight this, do the reverse of what we've just done. You can either push the percentage button here or from your drop down here, you can find percentage and there you go. And I'm just going to remove those decimal places just so it looks a bit tidy for those percentages. So that's the first one. So how do you find the percentage of total? All we need to do is we take the total number and we times it by the percentage amount. And that will give us obviously the, the number uh, value of that percentage. So next one, so uh, we've got increased by percentage. Well, actually that shouldn't be increased. That should say increase. So apologies for that. So how can we increase our before number by this percent? So this is where our calculation now gets a, a bit more, um, not technical, but we're just getting a bit more detail to our calculation. So the first thing you need to do is obviously take our starting number. So for us, that is going to be equals our before number, so F10 here. And then what we're gonna do is we're now gonna be using the plus symbol. And actually, before we jump into this, let's just quickly look at this from a basic standpoint. And we'll just convert these percentages back to our number values, which can be general there. So as we know from our previous example, we know that these decimal numbers represent a percentage, uh, or basically represent a percentage. So in order for us to increase by this percentage, what we need to do is we need to initially 
turn these into, for, for this first one, we don't want this just to be 5%, we want it to be 1.05%. So that actually, no, sorry I've said that wrong, we want it to be 1.05 as a decimal number, what would represent 105%. So therefore our calculation becomes 100 times 105% would obviously give you that 5% uplift. So if we were to just do this at the moment, so we went equals uh, the 100 uh, times 0.5, as you know, it would just give us 5% because it's just it was just saying, okay, well, what's 5% of 100? Uh, and we know that over here, that's obviously the same calculation we used there, obviously just different numbers. So what we actually want to do is rather than times by 0.05, we want to times by 1.05 what gives us that 5% uplift. So we know that our number before was 100. 5% 5 of 100 is five. Therefore, we want to add that five to the 100 to give us the after 105. And I hope that makes sense. I made a mistake in the middle there, but hopefully that did make sense to you and you're following along still. So how do we turn this 5% uh, into 105% uh, without messing with the numbers we've got there? Well, simply all we need to do is just make a little addition to the end of this formula. So we're going to simply do times by open brackets, and we're going to do the number one, what signifies 100%, plus the percentage that we have here in column G, what obviously is our 0.5, and then we're going to close our brackets and hit enter. And you can see that that now has done the same result as what we did manually. And if I was just to put in this column to the side here, that second part of the formula, all we're doing is equal 1 plus 0 0.05. So you can see that this is the number we're actually timesing our before number by. So we're now going to go 100 times by 1.05 gives us 105, what reflects an increase of 5%. And now all we need to do is copy that formula down. We can change our percentage here back to our percentage formatting, so it's nice and tidy. And there we go, we can now see that uh, 100 increased by 5% is 105, and so on and so forth. So 50 increased by 25% would give us 62.5%. So it all comes together as just as desired. So next, the inverse of that is to look at how can we decrease a number by a given percent. So it works very much in the same as this first example here in, by increase. But rather than 100 plus that number, we're going to be doing uh, 1 minus that number that we want to require. So for us, what was going to be here, so we can just put this in manually now. So what we actually want to do is we want to say, OK, what is 1, uh, i.e. 100% minus our desired decreased percentage, what is 0 0.05, I kept the numbers here the same, and we can see it's 95%. So what we actually want to do, what we're now going to be doing is, having done this calculation, is we're going to be timesing our starting number by our, by 95% to work out what that decreased value is. And again, hopefully you're still following along and that does make sense. So what I'll just do is put that calculation to the side here. So we're going to be doing equals 1 minus the percentage we want to decrease by. So we can see it's 95%, but we'll just put that to a number. And let's pull that down and let's put them to the left there. So we can see that these are actually the percentages that we want to be timesing our starting number by. So 50 reduced by 25% is the same as 50 times 70 or 75% of 50. Uh, 200 decreased by 50% is obviously the same as 200 times by 0.5, i.e. 50%. So I hope that makes sense. So what we need to now do is just add this to our calculation. So it's going to be equals our before number times by open brackets, one minus our desired percentage reduction, close brackets, hit enter, and you can see it's got a percentage in there at the moment, but we'll just format that back to a general. And we can see that 100 reduced by 5% or 100 minus 5% equals 95. And then what we can simply do is just drag that all the way down and you can see all those uh, results based on the different percentages we want to reduce by. So that is how we then do 
uh, create contents. So that's now how we've covered how we do percentage of total. So how do you find what number or what is 65% of 100? We've looked at how to increase a number by a percentage. So 100 um, add 5% is 105. And we've looked at decreasing percentage. So 100 uh, reduced by 5% gives us 95. So the last one we're going to be looking at is calculating percentage change. So it's kind of looking at this first one, or these first, well, we're looking at many of them, to be honest, but it's kind of pulling it all together. So for this one, we want to say we've got a before number of 100, we've got an after number of 110. So what is the percentage change that's happened to go from 100 to 110? So for this, we're going to now do another little calculation, and it's in two parts. So again, what we'll do on the side here is we'll do the first part so that we can see what that looks like. And actually, well, actually, we'll do it in the change column. So what we're going to first be doing is simply equals our result, so our light latest number, or our after number, the number that's happened after the change, minus the before number. And we know that that's going to be 10. So we can copy that. Actually, what I'm doing, I'm going to change my mind once again. So let's just pull it over to the side here. And all will hopefully make sense in a second. So all this calculation is doing is taking our after number and minusing off the before number so we can see what the number difference is. So once we've done that, we can copy that down. And we can see that we've got some additions and some reductions. So we can see we've got um, plus 10, plus 10, plus 5. We've had a reduction of 100, a reduction of 25, an addition of 20, and a reduction of 5. So these are all the numbers that have changed, what have happened to our starting number. The next thing we need to do is, well, the last thing we need to do is now say, okay, we know what has changed by, so what is this number as a percentage of our before number? So kind of going back to this first example we had here. So what we need to do is, oh, and I'm so sorry, but I've just now realized a mistake I made here. This is not, shouldn't be percentage change. This should be a number. So hopefully that's not that confused people throughout this whole video. So this is obviously just a number and this is a percentage. I originally was going to do this in a different order, uh, but yeah, so you can see, ignore whatever that header was, it should be number. Um, so we are, so sorry, going back to our percentage change at the end here, we know what the number has changed by. So all we now need to do is understand what this is a percentage of our before number. So we can go equals our amount changed divided by our 100 gives us a percentage. Let's copy that down, change it to percent, and we can now see that our what our percentage change is. So our 100 starting number changed to 110 is a, is a percentage increase of 10%, and just skimming down, and we can see that our before number of 200 reduced to 100 is a reduction of 50%. So it's pretty much there. All we now need to do is combine these two pieces of information together. So the first thing we want to do is rather than reference our Q10 here, so our number we've generated, we're going to just remove that and replace it with the calculation within brackets. So we're going to do open brackets, after number, minus before number, close brackets. So this is calculated for us, this number 10. And then it's going to divide it by our before number. And you can see what the same result of 10% there. Let's copy that down. Clear contents of that final column because we don't need it. And there you go. We can now see the final result there for us. So I hope that's been nice and clear for you in understanding how to do these various uh, percentage calculations. As I mentioned at the start of the video, you've got the link here. And you'll also find that same link below the video in the video description. So all you need to do is go to that link. You'll find this one, this video again. And you'll also be able to find another link will allow you to directly download this exact tutorial workbook. So you can go through it and you can actually see all the calculations in there for yourself. And you can also play around with these different before and before and after numbers or percentages. What will also help you understand how the formula is working. If this is your first time watching uh, one of our videos or stumbling across the channel, please do hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification as well so you're notified of all of our future videos. Uh, we're very close on getting to 4,000 subscribers. So again, if you're a regular viewer, please do hit that subscribe button as it would be greatly appreciated to help us get to that uh, or pass that 4,000 number. 
if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. Uh, it's not only greatly appreciated by myself, as it shows me the videos and the content you'd like to see more of, it also does help that all-important YouTube algorithm to help more people find this video. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.